Hey everybody, thank you so much for joining me. My name is Chelsea and thank you for visiting my channel. I want to talk to you today about surrender. And that is a big hot topic, but not just in the alternative spiritual community, but honestly in the religious community. Um, and even if you're not religious or spiritual, it's still a pretty heavily charged word. So I wanted to dive into it a little bit today because surrender is really the key um, to a lot of other spiritual concepts as we're trying to navigate this thing called life. Um, whenever we talk about manifesting what you want, whenever we talk about following your intuition, there's always an element of surrender. And what the hell is surrender? Um, so I'd love to discuss that with you today. And starting off, what surrender is not. Um, and this is, this is where I have spent a lot of my time in my spiritual journey is figuring out what it's not. Um, firstly, it's not giving up. It's not apathy. It's not just saying, okay, well, I surrender everything. I'm just going to go play video games and, uh, you know, my career will sort itself out. No, no. Surrender is a releasing of expectation. It's a releasing of control. It's a releasing of what it has to look like. Um, it's a releasing of effort. The best way I can describe the effect of surrender is if you were in like stuck in a river in the rapids somewhere and you're holding onto a rock and you don't know it, but there's actually like a really nice, calm, pretty pool, very picturesque, very, very picturesque, very quaint, um, gorgeous scenery, perfectly warm water, 20 yards out of sight. But we keep holding onto this rock because, oh my God, it's so rough right now. I need to hold onto this rock. I need to hold onto this rock. Things need to stay where they are. I need to stay where I am. Um, and surrender is releasing that rock not knowing where it's going to lead. Um, it's also not taking the easy choice. Um, that's the next kind of criticism of surrender. Well, what do you mean? I'm just supposed to like go with whatever's easiest. A lot of times, surrender is the path of least resistance internally. Uh, and what I mean by that is how many of us have been in toxic relationships romantic boss friend parent other and the 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 hard choice seems to be to leave the hard choice seems to be to walk away and it's eating us up inside it's killing us emotionally spiritually it feels so awful but it seems like on the outside the hard choice is to actually walk away it seems like the easy choice is to stay with the person it seems like that's the actual path of least resistance. No, no. Um, surrender is surrendering that moment to say, okay, this next step is going to be a bitch. This next step is going to suck. But I surrender to what my intuition is telling me. I surrender to what feels more aligned with me. And that is, that is usually a really hard one. Because so many of us like to think that once we've had our awakening, once we've become spiritual, um, everything just flows nice and easily. And, you know, may you be blessed and, you know, good vibes everywhere. Life doesn't stop just because you start surrendering. I hate to tell you. I'm sorry. But it does get a lot easier to deal with the sucky parts of life when you surrender. Surrender is also not abandoning your goals or your responsibility. And that, that's one that I really struggled with. It was surrendering control and it was surrender. It was coming to grips with the idea of, okay, so if I surrender what my future has to look like, does that just mean that I have no goals and ambitions for the future? Does that just mean that I should not have any, any ideas of where I want to go? No. What it means in that context is surrendering, again, what it has to look like. So yes, have goals, go out, do things, stick to your, stick to your words, stick to your responsibilities, but just know that it could change. And when you start living in a state of surrender, in a state of intuition, in a state of 
surrendering what our tiny, really relatively tiny human minds can imagine based on our past, um, we become open to bigger things. It's surrendering is, again, I will repeat this probably 15 times during this video, it's not giving up effort. It's not stopping taking those steps every single day because sometimes Source will give us a great vision for what we want our future to be. Uh, it will give us this amazing like, oh my God, I could start a company. I could run Fortune 500. I could, you know, be this like great global retreat center. I don't know. It, it could be amazing. But sometimes that vision is really just the fire lit under our ass. So we start walking on the path. And if we hold too tightly to that end goal and we don't surrender to change, to difference, to a direction shift, we could end up down a path that really isn't all that great if we keep trying to fight. So surrendering is ceasing the fight. It's loosening the grip. Because when we're gripping onto something so tightly, back to that rock metaphor, um, we're gripping, we're gripping, we're gripping onto the rock. If we were to just open our hands and surrender, then we could be open to receive something so much better than that stupid rock that was keeping us in that torrential current. But we have to let go of the control. And... Surrender is also a deep trust, which is insanely hard for most of us. So wait a minute, we're just supposed to trust that everything's going to work out? We're just supposed to trust that if we follow these steps blindly that we're being guided on, that we'll just somehow magically end up in a better place than we were? Huh? That is a terrifying prospect for the human brain. Um, but it really is a deep trust that this next step and the steps that are springing forth from it will lead us ultimately to our highest good if we let it. And that is a really, really tough pill to swallow, but I really would love to just underline that message. It Surrender is trust. Point blank. Uh, I could end the video right here, but... Um, I don't want to. So now that we kind of have gone over what surrender look, what surrender isn't, what it is, how the hell do we do it? Um, that one's really, really tough, and that one is also where I've spent a lot of my spirit, a lot of the bumpier parts of my spiritual awakening um, and my spiritual journey. It's a constant daily practice of surrender. And firstly, the idea is to focus on your intention, not the outcome that comes from it. And that's where we get really kind of bogged down and twisted up, especially in the area of manifesting. Well, yes, if I just put my, if I set my intention on the outcome, the outcome will come to me. I am feeling what the outcome will be like. I am feeling everything. Okay, yes, I am living in it. It is here. I am a millionaire. I am a millionaire. I am a millionaire. Um, and we're kind of losing ourselves in the future. The key to surrender is to focus on your intention. So why do you want that million dollars if you're manifesting that? Why do you want that million dollars? Usually there's a deeper reason and a deeper need that we're trying to fill when we focus on the outcome. Maybe it's peace. Maybe it's joy. Maybe it is connection. Maybe it's security. Um, anybody who has lived through 2020 knows the deep need for security. So focus on the intent. When you surrender what the outcome has to look like, that's where you start beginning to live in small little doses of surrender. For example, um, I work with clients. So my schedule is really never the same day to day. I don't have a nine to five. 
Um, and I'm also at the mercy of clients if they cancel. I am at the mercy of somebody's kid being sick and them not actually being able to make it so they have to reschedule. My, I might have a gap. It, you never know. And first, oh, side note about surrender. Quick little tangent. Um, it is okay to be frustrated in moments of surrender. It is okay to be angry in moments of surrender. It's okay to be disappointed in moments of surrender. Um, just because you are a spiritual being and a light worker and representing the love that can flow through the world, um, when bad things happen or when inconveniences happen, you don't have to like it one bit. That is the absolute truth. You are not here to be happy sunshine rainbows 24-7. If you were, you'd be clinically insane. Um, either that or you'd be on something really good, and if which case, you know, DM me later. Uh, but <laughs> back to my point. When you are surrendering little by little, day by day, and focusing your intent on what you want to be aligned with. I want to be aligned with peace. I want to be aligned with joy. I want to be aligned with freedom. Um, I want to be in line with lightness, with um, love. But I surrender what that all has to look like. Maybe today, peace feels like taking a break. Even if you're so focused on that money. Maybe peace feels like taking a long lunch. Maybe peace feels like turning off your phone at the end of the night and just spending it with your family. Maybe peace feels like turning off the news, even though that's where you get all of your information for how the world is going and therefore how your business might be going. I don't know. But focus on the intention, not the outcome. Second step to surrender. These are a couple of mantras that um, that really helped me, and they still do. Whenever something goes a little haywire in my life, and I find myself grasping at control, um, these help. First, I surrender what it has to look like. Repeat that, or just feel it and see how it feels. I surrender what it has to look like. I don't know about you, but I get a good feeling from that. That one instantly brings my blood pressure back down. That's a really great mantra to use when you're trying to make a decision, when you're stuck in that FOMO, or when you're setting a goal. My goal is to heal as many people as I can, but I surrender what that has to look like. Maybe that looks like YouTube videos. Maybe that looks like one-on-ones. Maybe that looks like a book. Maybe that looks like something that I can't even conceive of yet. But I'm going to walk that path and I surrender what it has to look like. Second one, this is a really great one for when things start falling apart too. I choose to trust. I choose to trust. Alternatively, if uh, you feel like the universe has it out for you, if you feel like God's picking on you today, I trust you. I trust you. And just settle in and feel those words. Whenever you start feeling like you're needing to grasp or scramble, feel into that. And just repeat those. And really, really mean it. And start, start doing it as a daily practice, especially uh, if one of those in the morning, ha you know, if one, sorry, back that up. If one of those phrases really kind of triggered you and you got kind of like a <laughs> feeling, that's the one you might need to start repeating every morning. Start your day with surrender. And then see how the day goes. And once you've gotten practiced with that, um, the next step is, okay, so how do I know? How will you know 
when you're on the other side and you're now getting pretty darn good at living in surrender. It's not going to happen all the time. We're not perfect. But what are some of the signs that you're actually getting the hang of this? And the first one is um, there's just an overarching feeling of peace. Like I said, you don't have to like one bit of the circumstances going on around you. Um, you know, in times of, of family grieving, in times of, you know, political unrest, in times of all this craziness going on right now, you don't have to be happy about it. But if you can trust and know that everything is happening for your highest evolution, this is all happening to help you level up. And you can surrender having to know why. That's the biggie. And that is such a tough one for me because I was always that kid in class who had to know why if I was going to pay attention in school. If a teacher couldn't tell me why I was going to use this later, I was checked out. So there's an overarching feeling of peace even in the fluctuating emotions um, of the circumstances going on around you. There's also, there's also a lack of, of grasping. Uh, you find that you're not scrabbling for control. You're not scrabbling to organize all of life around what catastrophe just happened. You're not trying to force your outside circumstances to fit what your intentions are. So in the example I used about working with clientele, when I'm really in it and I'm in a state of surrender, I usually don't try to, I, I don't fight the client. I mean, I never, I never really want to anyway, but there's not this need to say like, oh, well, mm -mm, <laughs> um, and try to like pressure them to show up because Usually, I know that there's a sign that, um, that for whatever reason, I needed that break. Maybe somebody else needs an emergency appointment. Maybe I'm about to get a call that I really didn't want to miss, um, and I would have missed it had I been in session. Um, and there's, you know, that kind of expands out to, our, out to our normal world. Have you ever, you know, had to... Um, See, I'm trying to think of a really good example here, and it's not coming to me for some reason. But let's say um, you've had a massive, massive cancellation of an event that you wanted to be at or something you wanted to do, or maybe just, hey, the, uh, the show's sold out. And instead, and have you ever, have you, have you done it both ways? Have you hopped on StubHub and said, okay, tickets, 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 and paid three times as much for the same tickets just so you could go to the show only to figure out that mm, it wasn't all that great? And then have you been in a similar situation where maybe the show is sold out and something happens and you went out to dinner with all your friends and had the most amazing time ever? Or maybe you went to a bar that you didn't mean to go to and you met somebody that you would have never met? That's surrender. Surrender is saying, okay, not this plan. Something higher is coming along. And the last way that you really kind of know that you're getting in the hang of, um, of living in surrender is you actually, this is the cool part, you actually start to see the whys a lot more quickly and a lot more clearly. Um, again, when we're scrabbling and when we're grasping to hold on to our plans for the day, um, or when we're, when we're grasping on to how things should be, and then those things go haywire, it's a big effort to see the purpose in it. And we find ourselves asking, why God? Why? I thought that was the one thing, and now I don't have it. And we kind of get in our own little pity party. When we're in a state of surrender our eyes become much more open to God, the universe source, telling you, no, no, this is why this happened. 
like I said, when I'm in a really good state of surrender and my schedule gets cleared out for no reason, um, I usually can tell that there was a reason within maybe either that day or a couple of days and my schedule gets rearranged in a very beautiful way. Um, when I was through, just after I had asked um, my ex for a divorce, my schedule magically cleared like three people asked me if they could move it to a different day. And I went like, well, okie dokie. And so I'm walking around on my now newfound day off. And my friend calls me up because uh, she, she was looking at the animal shelter website and said, Chelsea, I just found the, she's from Arkansas. Uh, and I can't talk about her without doing an Arkansas, a really bad Arkansas accent. But she called me up and said, Chelsea, I found the perfect little kitten for Pierre. Oh my gosh, he's gonna love her. You have to come see him with, you have to come see her with me. I thought, oh my God, I, it, no, I don't have it in me right now. I can't take on a kitten and my cat, like my cat and I just need to be together. We just need this moment. And she said, okay, well, just come and play with the kitties with me for about like, you know, 10 minutes. Well, now I have a Piper. Um, and she has been a great addition to the family and to our and to my little home had my day not cleared out I, I don't know if I would have met this beautiful little kitten I don't know if I would have had the time to be with her and you know help the cats bond and I don't know I might not have um you know I might not have the other half of my little dynamic duo, of my little dynamic duo so all that, story, all that short little story to say, surrender is the key to the next stages of spirituality. And it's a very unsung hero, I think, in a lot of, um, in a lot of spirituality. We just say, okay, surrender, go, do it. Surrender all control and just give it to the universe. So I really hope that this helps clarify a little bit about what surrender is and how to start going about it and you know what it's going to look like down the line if you have any questions please comment uh, if this video served you please like and subscribe because there's a whole bunch more coming have a wonderful rest of your day